What's up, you data-hungry Amazon sellers? This is your host, Tommy Berenger of the Sell, Rank, Win podcast for Merchant Words. And in this podcast, we give you the answers to your most burning questions, actionable insights that you can take away and implement into your business today. So let's go ahead and dive right into today's episode. What do you say? Let's go. All right. Welcome to the Sell, Rank, Win podcast, everyone. Uh, I'm your host, Tommy Berenger. And today we have a very special guest on with us. She used to have a, quote, gross real job that was stupid and awful, end quote. She decided to quit that gross real job and start an Etsy store. Six months later, she was making more money than that stupid, awful job ever paid her. She is now an Etsy Sith Lord that loves making money online and helping others do the same. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Jenny Waldrop from Fuzzy and Bert. How are you doing today, Jenny? I am doing great, Tommy. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to spill the tea about Etsy for your Amazon sellers. I have sold on Amazon and man, there is a big difference between the two. And that's what we are here for today. I really want to pick your brain on that um, because I have never sold on Etsy before. I have a few friends that have. um, And you know, I I understand it is a totally different ballgame. So that's why we're here. You are one of the best out there. So, um, you know, we were here to pick your brain and maybe get some of our Amazon sellers to scale over to Etsy. You know, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I'm excited to to chat about it all. Let's do it. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and dive in and give them uh, what they're here for. Sure. Okay, cool. So just tell us a bit about Fuzzy and Birch and then how and why um, you got into selling on Etsy. Yeah, so I was in a gross, awful job, as you said. I was. (laughs) you know, in the situation a lot of people are in. They don't love their job. They don't love their boss. The work that they're doing isn't challenging or fun. And, you know, you get things that happen that just make you go, I wish it was easier. And I got to the point where I was so miserable that I decided, you know what, I'm just going to make enough money to quit this job for a few months because I had no savings at the time, literally living loaf of bread to loaf of bread. And taking a big risk. Oh yeah. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Why don't I do something that makes me a little extra money so I can quit for a few months and then I can figure out what I really want and really need. I'll have that freedom and then I'll be able to, you know, go back to school or reapply to other jobs, whatever I want. So my goal was to do this online because that seemed easy and straightforward gig economy, you know? So I started selling on Etsy primarily because I had tried to launch a business where I was selling websites because that's what I did. I made websites. Mm. And uh, after years and years of trying to make that work in the background of my real job, it wasn't working. And I put one of those listings up on Etsy and it, it sold very, very quickly. Nice. And nice. I was like, that must have been hmm, a great feeling. There is. Some, yeah. You have that moment when you realize that that one idea you had at four in the morning may have it <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what that Those are was. sometimes the best ones and sometimes the worst ones, right? Yes. So this one looks like it was a really good one. Oh yeah. So after a little bit of trial and error there and realizing that I just do not like working with customers one-on-one, I opted to start selling sarcastic things on Etsy, particularly digital downloads. Cause I was like, all right, I got a full-time job here. I've got other stuff going on. I'm pretty busy. I want to take my graphic designs and I want to put them online and see if they sell. Cause I don't have to do any work. I just do all the work up front and then boom, if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, okay, well, I didn't really waste that the much beauty time. Of a di- the beauty of a digital product. Yes. yes. And uh, those started going pretty quickly. In fact, I think about two months in, we were featured on Facebook by some company and we made, I think it was 600 sales in a weekend. It was insane. Nice. I At that point, it had never occurred to me that I would ever do anything other than, you know, a real desk job. And that was the moment where I realized that this was totally feasible as a real job. And I needed to kind of make a decision. Do I want to work for myself or do I want to work for someone else? And that answer was immediately obvious to me. So yeah, I decided to leave that horrible job and (laughs) work for myself. And it has been absolutely great. It was scary in the beginning because, you know, you're not sure where the money is going to come from or if it's going to keep coming. But one thing I found was quitting my job really made me solve those problems a lot faster because there was a lot on the line. So uh, I've had a a wonderful, I think it's been almost seven year run now. I keep saying five years, but it's seven years. 
I now teach people how to succeed on Etsy. I have a, a team of Etsy coaches and we work to make people as much money on Etsy as they can get out of their store and make sure that they're happy and not going crazy because they have no time in the process. Very cool. It seems like you have that all ironed out and um, you know, more power to you. That's so awesome, Jenny, that seven years, that's, that, that is amazing. No, that's great. Yeah. Um, so w- with Etsy now, do you sell on your website and then also Etsy or do you just do Etsy exclusively? So originally I fell for the hype of, okay, in order to be professional, you got to have a website. You know, this was back in 2015 and everybody was like, you got to have a website, you got to have a website. I got on Shopify. I was selling on Etsy. I was selling on Shopify. I was selling mm-hmm. on a platform called Not on the High Street because I was living in the UK. And Amazon Handmade had just come out. So I was selling on Amazon Handmade. And of all of those platforms, the one that consistently made me about $12 a month was Shopify. It was also the hardest to maintain. It was the hardest to, I mean, I was working in Silicon Valley as a Google certified SEO expert, and I was having trouble getting traffic to that Shopify store. So it was not straightforward. I mean, it was basically like you either pay for traffic or you spend all your time on marketing and none of your time with your customers and with your product, which as somebody who makes a handmade product was a huge part of my job already. So Shopify wound up being one of those things where I was like, you know what, when it comes to e-commerce, selling on your web own websites just didn't make as much sense for me as working on something that had an audience built in already where I didn't have to do all that extra work to get the traffic. I mean, I can't get the kind of traffic that Etsy and Amazon get. I literally right. have to be the CEO of Google to get that level of traffic to my website. That I mean, that's kind of crazy to hear, especially from you, um, who, someone who's been doing this for s- such a long time and really knows the ins and outs of Etsy. And you're just like, forget the website. Let's just do Etsy exclusively. Um, and focus all my efforts on this. And that's basically what it sounds like you're doing. And it sounds like you're being very successful at it. It's a, it's a time thing, you know, you got to decide, is this worth my time? And ultimately at the end of the day, if it's going to take you six years to make something, make the same amount of money that this other thing is already making you the same amount of money on, it's, it, you got to make a decision. I know people who are super successful with the website. It just wasn't for me. And I think that's a very personal decision. But for most people that are like, I'm already busy, I'm like, well, a website's probably not the right direction right now. So a question, <clears throat> excuse me, a question on that is I sell on Amazon myself and I have a website, but I don't drive any traffic to it. I just have it there because I, for brand registry purposes on Amazon, you have to have a website. Um, and then some people will just kind of look to see if you're real and say, you know, does it, do these people really have a website? You know, I want to check it out. So I do have, I have socials, all that stuff for my brand as well. Um, and I wanted to ask you now, you probably, I'm assuming you have a website for the same purpose, but I'm just, I wanted to ask to make sure. So I have a blog and I have a blog because I learned pretty quickly that If you nurture your customers and show them that you know what you're talking about or show them the cool stuff, especially for free, whether it's related to your product or related to something that you do that's similar to your product, that establishes authority in a really cool way, especially when you look at how many fake websites are out there right now. (laughs) I, I can't tell you how often my poor husband will be shopping and I'll be like, um, I don't think this is a real website. And it takes me two minutes of research to figure this out. But this poor guy, I mean, he's bought from a fake website a few times. And I think that all of us have fallen down that rabbit hole and made a mistake and realized that anyone can make a website these days and fake websites are out there. In fact, I think I was just looking at statistics the other day with one of my sellers. We were on a coaching call and we were doing some research and we found that people are actually more likely to buy on a known e-commerce site. It's as much as 50% more frequently, they will buy from something like Etsy or Amazon or eBay over your own website. So most people are seeing at least 50% fewer sales on their website, unless they're doing something really special, like we're nurturing customers. So on our current website, we see more sales than anywhere else, but we're going out of our way to give people stuff for free, to show them that we want to help them and we're there for them. And I think that that's what customers want. And if you don't have time to do that, then why not just keep it simple with something like a landing page builder where people can, you know, use a bitly link or uh, we use a program called Shorby 
that we use for our Instagram. We're going to use it for TikTok. It's basically like a little tiny landing page that's mobile, and it directs people to all the places that they commonly ask for. So why run a website when you can have something like that? Plug a few links in, get people going where they want to go, get their questions answered, give them a support link, and boom, mm-hmm. you're, you're up in business. Yeah, and I want, I want to touch on that point. You bring up a very good point. And some, some sellers out there, um, the ones that have been doing it for a while probably understand this, but nurturing your customers, um, building an email list if you can, reaching out to those customers, giving them free value is so important. Um, even if it's just something like, I don't know, uh, if you're in the kitchen, kitchen space or something, sending them a free recipe, if they're in the vegan area, you know, they, people, they love that, you know, and then every, t- you know, time to time, give them a discount or something. Um, but it is very important to nurture your customers that, that I mean, that's, that's awesome advice there. Um, so w- I wanted to ask you this. So and I and th- this is something I don't know. This is why I'm here picking your brain. So with I, I use the Amazon FBA model. Is there a, any type of model within Etsy that they do all the picking and packing and shipping and handling the returns and customer service for you? Is there anything like that in Etsy? Sort of. So Etsy doesn't do it, but there's a ton of third party options that will do it. In fact, when it comes to a platform like Etsy where you're handmade, a lot of people are like, well, if I'm making it by hand, how can somebody pick and pack and ship it? I guess I would have to make a ton of it and then ship it to them. We do see our customers use Amazon FBA for that exact reason, especially if they're selling on Amazon Handmade. But a lot of what our customers do is they use a product called Print on Demand. I'm sure some of your sellers have heard of this before. They're basically companies that print on blanks for you. So you upload your design and they print it on a blank and you get to choose that blank. So for my customers, I would always choose, you know, locally made, made in USA if possible, um, high quality sort of products that would print my designs on. And then the print on demand company literally puts it in your packaging with your sticker on top and ships it to the customer for you. The reason I, I love that for anyone really is because, you know, if it arrives and it's wrong, print on demand will fix it for you. You don't have to pay for all that extra inventory in the back and forth. You only pay print on demand if you make a sale and they do charge for shipping, which is a little bit different than the Amazon model, but a lot of our sellers are going to be used to working shipping into their price anyway. So you can either work it into your price or you can charge shipping depending on what you prefer and what the platform algorithm, you know, designates you should be doing. And yes, Etsy likes free shipping just as much as Amazon. So most of our sellers are working it into their price. So another thing I I wanted to ask you, ask you about is the, is the shipping. So I bought a a handful of things from Etsy for my daughters and it just takes, it takes a long time to get to me a lot longer than Amazon. You know, I, I think we're all um, getting spoiled as a society with the instant gratification that Amazon has provided us, you know, so, sometimes getting the product in the same day, which is, which is awesome. You know, I, I, I'm spoiled myself. Maybe you are too. Um, but so with Etsy, is there any, like, I mean, I'm not always shopping on Etsy, so maybe there is like a one day or a two day. Um, how, it, it, is there anything in equivalent to that? So it really depends on the product and what you're selling and how you work your business out. If you already have a successful Amazon business and you just want to move over to Etsy, I see nothing wrong with using Amazon Handmade or Amazon FBA to do exactly what you're already doing. There is mm-hmm. an Etsy equivalent third-party program called ShipStation. So Ship, S-H-I-P. And you basically send your product to them and they pack and ship it in 24 hours or less. They have warehouses all over the world which is really helpful because one of the primary complaints you get as an Etsy seller. So if you sell on Etsy, you'll hear this all the time. People will be like, well, where's my item? I ordered it this time. They do expect that Amazon shipping. But the reality is if you're in the US and your customer is in the UK and you're shipping from home, that's not going to happen. So Etsy actually has this cool thing during checkout now where it notifies customers of exactly how long their item should take to get there. So there's no lack of clarity. It does tell them during checkout, you can easily see it on an Etsy page now when this item will get to you and where it's shipping from. And if you are shipping from a warehouse, I always just designated the address of my warehouse as the place where I was shipping from because it gives buyers a more realistic expectation of where this item is coming from and how long it will take to get to them. 
But that's a really easy solution if you want to create the same thing. It's very similar to the Amazon model where they charge you for space for storage, and that's about it. So okay, yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Um, so you kind of alluded to this earlier. Um, is you know, does it make sense for every Amazon seller to get on the Etsy train? Um, is there some type of space that maybe doesn't make any sense at all? And then is there any anybody who's it's just, you know, a no brainer that they need to do Etsy and Amazon? Yeah. So I would say right off the bat, if you are a designer and you can do something digital because Amazon and digital are not really great friends. Right. <laughs> so Etsy and digital, one of the top sellers. So the things that really sell out on Etsy, if you really just want to think to yourself, okay, I just want to really complement my income, really double my, my monthly income, you're looking at craft supplies and you're looking at digital items. Those both okay. go crazy. Other items do go crazy as well. They're just a little bit harder. You know, Jewelry is a little bit harder. Can also make you a little more money because you can charge more. So if you can sell craft supplies on Etsy, that's a no-brainer. That's where people go for craft supplies in a big way. The biggest sellers on Etsy are pretty much all in the craft supply. If you look at the top 100, I think right now, if 50% are craft supply sellers, it might be even higher. But everybody else is scattered all over the place. So that really tells you about what Etsy shoppers are looking for. The digital items I love for Amazon sellers because for a lot of Amazon sellers, they're getting this product, they're shipping it to the warehouse, they're maintaining customer support. They're doing a lot of day-to-day -day work, whereas digital, the work is front-loaded. There's so many cool tools out there that can even allow your customer to personalize something digital. So like, let's say I want to sell birthday invitations that are digital. I can send my customer to a Canva template and they can put in their kid's name, age, address. I don't have to do any of that as the seller. I just sent them to a template that I designed. That's incredibly cool. And those are the, a lot of the sellers that we're seeing that are making 10, 20K a month are doing this sort of thing and really just giving people really high quality design. So if you're a really good designer or you have access to really good designs or if you have commercial licenses for really good designs, it's a no brainer for Etsy. Now, if you're selling a physical product and you can sell it on Amazon Handmade, it does make sense to go to Etsy. I will say that for everyone who's selling on Amazon, Etsy kind of starts up a little bit slower. So it's something you kind of have to wait on, but it builds really, really nicely. And it's a great way to double your income. That's essentially what I did with Amazon Handmade. I was like, all right, I want to be making X amount of money every single month. How can I do this quickly in three to five months? That's why I added Amazon Handmade. You'll kind of see the same thing if you go in the opposite direction with Etsy, where if you're already seeing good sales on your product, I'd say five to 10 a month, you're probably going to build up to that on Etsy pretty well. It's just going to take a little while. Right. Just kind of getting, getting the bearings when you're going over, when you're switching over to the, uh, the, the other platform. Yeah. Um, and so another thing I wanted to ask you, which we, we basically spoke about a little bit, but let, let's, I want to get more centered on it just a little bit. What are the biggest differences you see in between Etsy, selling on Etsy and selling on Amazon? What are the main like top three? Well, the first have. one I'd say is you can definitely charge more for an Etsy product than you can for an Amazon product. Very nice. <laughs> That's Very a big nice. one. And customers are really just looking for that unique, special thing on Etsy. But I've seen sellers take their item and put it, like literally go, I'm selling this item on Amazon. I'm going to put it right here on Etsy. And they find that not only do they make more sales, but they can charge a little bit more. But the volume must be a little bit lower. The volume right? can be a little bit lower, but it depends. If you're selling craft supplies, it's not going to be, or anything in that realm. So sort of you know, you, you really intrigued me with these craft supplies, and yeah. I wrote that down. Yeah. And and now it, it has my 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 entrepreneur brain going right now. So I'm like, and you, and it's so funny because I did a lot of research and due diligence in the craft space, selling selling craft stuff. Um, but I never I never went into it. But now I'm going to look back into that and then maybe you can help me. I'll come to you and then you got to help me sell on Etsy and we'll, and we'll make something happen there. Oh, yeah. So. If I was going to sell, if I was going to start a store that I deliberately wanted to make, you know, 10K in a year right now, I'd literally go online and find the Etsy trends. We offer free trend digest, but Etsy does too. It's really easy to find this. Even just a Pinterest search for Etsy trends will get you where you want to go. 
I would literally start selling what I've been seeing. That's really. Hold on, rewind, right rewind that, rewind that back. That's a that's a big value tip right there. So tell all the sell all the, everyone if who is looking into getting on Etsy what you just said right there. So I always, the Pinterest. I always start with research, and Pinterest is like a gold mine. And here's why: people who are on Pinterest, a lot of them are there to shop. It's a really high percentage of people who are on Pinterest looking for something special. And so Pinterest tends to be ahead of the curve trend-wise. I can't tell you how many times I would do a Pinterest search just in front of the TV in the evening, late at night, just for fun. And I would suddenly start to realize there's so many patterns of what I'm seeing and what I'm saving. For example, right now, tortoise shell. You may have noticed acrylics and tortoise shell are everywhere in the retail shops right now. They're going crazy. They're probably going to go crazy for a year or two, maybe more. If I was going to start selling beads, for example, I'd get on Alibaba and I'd start looking for some tortoise shell beads in bulk. And I'd list them on Etsy. I'd get them in different sizes. If I can get them in different colors, so be it. If I can get different shapes and sizes, great. Okay, well, now I have literally 20 items I just named that I can put on Etsy from one Alibaba shipment. And these are the sorts of things that are just going absolutely crazy. The best way to start off with Etsy is to think in terms of trends. What is that trendy customer looking for? Because those are the things that really go crazy. Even if you're not an SEO expert, you don't pick the right tags and titles. It, SEO is just one piece of the puzzle. Same with Amazon. If your pictures are really bad, then it doesn't matter if your SEO is perfect. Same thing with Etsy. You know, Amazon sellers have every tool that they need to succeed on Etsy. A lot of times, the only thing that's missing is just being on top of trends. And there are endless websites that will do this for you in one click now. You don't even have to think about it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then we just started kind of like a sister company, as you know, Maker Words, which is now c- centered around Etsy um, keywords. So, because we've seen a lot of looking at the data, we've seen a huge uptick in Etsy as well. So, that's why we're here providing SEO help now for Etsy sellers, which is Maker Words. And thank you for uh, testing that site out. We appreciate that as well. Oh, yeah. It's been so fun. And our sellers that are making good money love your product. They're finding words. Oh, that okay. They're telling us that their big competitors are not using the same words as they are. They're able to kind of beat out their competition that are really kind of similar to them which is really interesting because there are so many SEO kind of options with Etsy when it comes to, okay, you only have 13 words, your title is seen, but your description is not. But, you know, so a lot of people feel really limited, but the reality is when you find a source of different words that are really good, especially you guys with the long tail keywords, our sellers love those ideas. They've been getting ideas for new products to sell based on what's popular and coming up in your program. And they've been getting ideas for ways to kind of edge out the competition on their product. So it's been really great to watch them just make a couple tweaks and do better. That's very cool. That's yeah. very good. That's awesome to hear. And that that's with maker words, obviously, not yep. merchant words. Okay. Uh, they, some of our sellers do use both. Because you, they'll sell they use both. merchant words as well? Sometimes, okay, perfect. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because I mean, like we were speaking about earlier, the trends do kind of overlap, I think, between Amazon and Etsy, right? So yeah. we have merchant words for for Amazon, and then now we have the maker words, which is centered um, around Etsy. So that's really cool to hear. Thank you for that. Thank you for that feedback. Thanks for creating it. It's been no, fun absolutely. It was it wasn't me. It was the rest of the team. They, we have an amazing team. I, I cannot take any credit for that. The, these guys. We have amazing engineers, data scientists. I mean, every copywriters, all that stuff. They're, the team, our team, is awesome. Anyways. Um, I'll bring it back here. So, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to come and learn how to sell on Etsy in conjunction with my Amazon business, how, if I want to come to you for that, how, how does that work? So the fastest way to get what you need, because with a lot of Amazon sellers, I've realized they're used to things happening fast and furious. We have an Etsy quiz that you can take. And if you have no Etsy shop, just tell it the truth. And it'll give you a custom Etsy course at the end of the quiz that tells you what you need to do based on where you are. So a lot of Amazon sellers have played with Etsy. They might have a shop with a couple sales. You can tell it that. Whatever you have, that quiz will walk you through. I have told people to lie to the quiz and tell it that they have no Etsy sales because it gives them basically how to start on Etsy in an afternoon in a 10-minute, 20-minute video. And this is our best stuff packed into, we want you to start on Etsy, obviously. 
because it's it's freed me from a terrible job. Why would I not want to share that from other people with other people? And I mean, let's be honest. We talk about Etsy. We want you to hang out and talk about it with us and be a part of our business. So of course, we love offering that for free. So if you take the quiz, whether you have an Etsy shop or not, you lie to it, tell it you have no Etsy sales, um, whether you do or not, it'll give you that free course at the end that is just absolutely amazing. And we'll give you that super, super, super quick startup as, as well as all the tools I mentioned, print on demand, all that other stuff. Oh, so nice. You don't have to think about, you know, where do I get this? How do I set this up? Oh, well, here's the tool that you use. Don't even think about other ones. This is the simplest. It's the cheapest. It's the easiest. So remember, you heard it from Jenny here first. Lie to the quiz. Lie, Lie to, to it. Quiz. All yeah. right. So you get the good stuff. <laughs> yes. So where, where can they go take that quiz? That is where can I go Etsy. take that quiz? That is EtsyQuiz.com. All right. All right. Cool. Awesome. All right, Jenny, we like to keep this, these podcasts short and sweet, um, but you gave us a lot of value. Thank you very much for everything. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And at the end of every podcast, we love for our guests to give our listeners um, some type of tip, some type of life tip or business tip that they can use. Um, so what, what do you got for us today? Uh, today's a good day because I just had one of these moments myself. I All keep right. learning over and over again that I need to be stubborn. The only way that I have ever seen myself succeed in business is when I keep trying new things, I keep coming at things from different directions, and I just got to give myself the space to keep on trying different stuff. Even if I'm trying the same thing, just a slightly different way, that works too. It doesn't matter. But never have we seen as much growth as when I've said, you know what? We failed miserably here. Let's try it again. Even if it's the same way, let's just try it again. And then if that same way doesn't work, we try a different way. I just keep learning that lesson over and over again. Today was a great example of it for me because <laughs> uh, my team basically told me my own thing today. And they were like, uh, you keep telling us to do this and you, you need to do it too. And it's very accurate. And sometimes when you're in business, you get tired. You, you forget. There's a lot of pressure on you. You have a big mental load when you're running your own business. And you forget that all this really is, is just you being stubborn on repeat. So try it. <laughs> if you're frustrated, <laughs> just look at it, make it simple from that perspective and don't worry about the rest. Great advice. So basically taking your own advice, right? And then being stubborn, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Great advice, Jenny. Thank you for that. Um, so where can people find you where if they want to learn how to sell on Etsy like you? Um, I mean, you're the Etsy Sith Lord here. So where can they find you? How can they contact you? Maybe shoot out some of your socials if sure. you can. Yeah, um, we have two. We are all kinds of complicated, but we decided to put our blog, our podcast, our videos, all of our free stuff in one place for everybody because people kept asking us where to find all that. It was in a million different places. That's on a place called birchplease.co. That is our blog, podcast, videos, free courses. If you want to take stuff, that's a good place to be. Obviously, we talked about the Etsy quiz. And then if you want to follow us on Instagram, we're Birch Please Blog. We're about to implement an SMS system where you can text our Etsy coaches and ask them questions. So I will send that number to you when we have it. But if you go to the Birch Please, it'll be on that page as soon as we have it up and running. So you can just grab it and text our Etsy coaches. And their job is to see what's going on with you, send you a video if you need it, send you resources if you need it, and get you on the right track with all, all the Googling and the effort. Awesome. All right. It looks like my kids are getting restless. The door is locked and they they keep saying daddy. You gave us some good amount of time, man. That was, that was decent. Yeah, no, I know. It, it, I kept looking at the time. I'm like, geez, I was like, this feels like it's going by quick. And usually we, I keep the podcast shorter to like 15 minutes, but this has been a value packed podcast. Jenny, thank you so much for coming on. I just want to uh, thank you again for coming on and taking time out of your super busy day. I mean, thank you so much. I think we need to do this again. And if any of you Amazon sellers out there or anybody out there, trying to look into selling on Etsy or scaling over to Etsy. I think Jenny is your girl here to go ahead and contact. She knows her stuff. Trust me. I checked her out online. She, she knows her stuff for sure. Um, so I just want to say thank you again, Jenny, so much for coming on. And I appreciate, appreciate uh, your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Tommy. It's been, you've been a fun host. All right, let's do it. And I'm coming on your podcast next, right? Yeah, you are. I'm excited. Let's do You're it. Ask let's do it. All kinds of Amazon questions. A lot uh -oh. of our sellers are seeing some big growth on Amazon, and we got to know all, right. all the things. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Sounds good. 
All right. Well, thanks so much, Jenny. I appreciate it. Yeah, you too. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. And if you got any value out of this podcast at all, please let us know at the place that you listen to it at, whether it be iTunes, Stitcher, whatever it is. Give us some love, give us an awesome review and let us know maybe uh, some things you want us to talk about on the next podcast. Till next time, guys, stay awesome and be awesome. awesome.